Asian markets which have moved lower after opening in the green. Up two tenths of one percent, exactly as expected. All reports of stake sales by the promoters are speculative. The market is stalled around this 19,000, uh, 630, 19,645 zone. You need to kind of cross this. This is a very large deal by HCL Tech, $2.1 billion. Astral, you know, expect flows of close to $176 million. It is HCL Tech's largest services deal. The bank nifty is the one, remember, that's been dragging its feet a bit and that uh, is once again opens with a cut of about 67 odd points. We could uh, see still about, you know, 15-17% kind of earnings growth for the year. So the company has lowered its domestic business growth guidance. The nifty pharma index is down more than about a half a percent. We believe the first draft is now ready. We are in fact conducting our internal inquiry and we will look into it. If you observe actually last quarter of 23. Hmm. Uh, there was a tremendous pressure. Okay, that is the day so far. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Closing Bell, the last hour of trade coming up. Uh, you know, there are three of us here, but actually not three, but four, because uh, you can't see. We'll move the camera a little bit. Prakash Devan is with us as well here in our studios. But I'm Prashant. With me, my colleagues, Reema, Surubi, uh, and of course, Nigel is joining us from the uh, newsroom floor as always. Guys, hi, good afternoon. And let's uh, say hi to Prakash. He's yeah, now visible on the screen. Think, oh, yeah. Hello, Prakash. Good to no, have you in the studio. Right. Hi, hi. <laughs> lovely, lovely to and be here. But good. yeah, thanks. <laughs> so yeah, uh, good to have you here, Prakash. Well, I just quickly take a look at what uh, the market is doing, and uh, you know, then we'll kind of uh, look at uh, specific stocks, etc. So you know, the, in, we broke below uh, Wednesday's low. This was the first kind of uh, uh, support or whatever you want to call it, a marker on the way lower, which was 19467. Uh, and at least intraday, we've uh, broken below it. We're just above it now. Uh, the close, in that sense, becomes important. The banks are particularly weak. Yesterday, that was the index which uh, lost uh, more than what the Nifty lost. It's making lower lows, very clearly. And uh, the Nifty bank also, at least on an intraday basis, has broken below the 3rd of August low, which is the recent low in the cycle, uh, which was 44,280. Again, the Nifty bank is just above that level as we speak. Uh, so a close again here should be. Interesting, important market breadth is almost one is to one, a little bit tilted in favor of declines. Small cap index is still uh, a little bit higher. And that's been the incredible part of the market, uh, which just refuses to uh, give back gains. Mid caps are down, but nothing uh, on the small caps, which is still trading with a little bit of gains. Lots of stock specific action, both up and down. And that's the focus here over the next 60 minutes. Prima. Uh, the space which is very excited are the mid-cap banks. So, IOB, Central Bank, JNK Bank, Yuko Bank, uh, Bank of Maharashtra. Across the board, you're seeing some very, very large gains on, in that. That's the you know, mid-cap banking space. Uh, keep a eye on India Cement. Now, India Cement has been moving up for the third consecutive day and on very large volumes. Today as well, India Cement is up close to about 6.5% and a one-week chart of that would be quite uh, you know, helpful to show you the kind of gains that's uh, seen. Uh, on the earnings front, there have been a few disappointments. So Alchem struggles for the second day in a row. The company has cut its India domestic uh, business revenue guidance. Apollo tires, mixed set of numbers, but the stock has taken a bit of a beating. And now even some more defense numbers are out. I think BEML just came out with numbers a while back, and that stock is slipping in trade. BEML has a loss of 75 crore in the current quarter. Yeah, that's a result reaction that's not really gone uh, you know, too well uh, with the street. But Prashant, I completely take your point. I think, you know, as much as we want to have big, bright smiles on our face because it is Friday and we will by the end of this hour, uh, you know, the fact is it's been a weak market and if we have a close mm. at the weakest point of the week, then that's never reassuring, right? The other thing that I was looking at was the Bank Nifty, which has been a consistent yeah. underperformer. If you look at it from the top of the rally, the Nifty has lost about 2.5%, which is actually not too much. I mean, we feel a little somber when we're looking at this red screen and, you know, 19,000... 450 thereabouts on the Nifty, but it's just 2.5% from the top. The bank Nifty has lost 4.5% from the top. And throughout this earnings season, if there's been one thing that's constant, it's the underperformance of large banks. PSU banks are a different story altogether. Uh, as Rima pointed out today, different factors over there. Uh, perhaps just some interesting trading action going on. But uh, the large banks, your big blue chip banks, they have been underperforming. However, as I said, it is Friday. So I do want to, you know, toss to Nigel on an optimistic note. So look at some of the, the action in the mid-cap space. Not only is the mid-cap index outperforming the benchmarks, 
look at names. Genus Power, remember smart metering is such a big theme in this market. So Genus Power again is up 10%. It's seeing some very smart buying today. Force Motors numbers were very good. The stock's putting on another 10%. It was up yesterday, I think 10, 11% yesterday, another 10% today. Uh, and then you have the likes of Kalyan Jewelers uh, sparkling away with 12% up moves. Some more movers and shakers on the upside in the broader market. Nigel, what say? Uh, it is Friday. We have reason to be uh, you know, cheerful, right? Absolutely. A lot of reason to be cheerful. And Friday, you know, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. And then we have a <laughs> truncated week ahead as well, so it only gets better from here. But in terms of the market action, I would say it's not too bad. You know, the 19,425 odd mark has held out. And we have bounced 50 points from there. So that's uh, pretty good news, I would say. And this 60-point cut, 60-70-point cut, we saw it in the first 15 minutes itself, first 15 to 20 minutes odd. So from there, though, we did see a bit of a winding of this cut, but we haven't fallen apart. And the Nifty Bank as well, it's holding on to the 44,300 mark. I'll tell you what, it's at a very, very crucial juncture. Because if it breaks this, then it slides down to around the 100 DMA. So you don't want that to happen because that's an 800-point slide from these levels. The Nifty Bank, that's the weak pocket. And despite that, the Nifty is holding on. So not so bad, but the final 60 minutes will be crucial. And you don't want the markets to end at the low point of the day. But to find out how is the technical setup, and how do you approach trade? We're joined by Nagraj Sethi, the Senior Technical Research Analyst at HGFC Securities. Hi, Nagraj. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining in. What's your view on the index? The Nifty Bank, well, that's a so point. But on the Nifty, how would you trade it? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Nifty has been in a downward correction over the last uh, many weeks. Uh, on the daily chart, what we can observe is the lower tops and lower bottoms. And after the formation of the lower bottom recently, around the 19th 645 Nifty has been uh, uh, resilient to show any sharp decline from here. I'm expecting, even though market is showing downward corrections, I'm not expecting any bigger decline in the market. From uh, below here, uh, 19300 is going to be a strong support, and uh, further uh, weakness from here is expected to be a uh, 19100 to 19000 level, which is a strong support for the market. And I'm expecting a good amount of upside bounce from here. Uh, from uh, uh, chart angle, from the long-term charts, we have seen a significant upside rally from uh, March, April to almost uh, July, August, and uh, we have seen we haven't seen any uh, uh, reasonable downward correction in between. And uh, last two three weeks, the market's consolidating. The market showing weakness from the highs of a uh, 20k mark is uh, just a time correction rather than any significant price correction. So I'm expecting a limited downside from here and upside bounce from the lower levels. It may be around the 19,300, 350 levels or uh, slightly lower if it is uh, if it comes down than around 19,100 levels. Okay, what about your uh, stock recommendations? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, stock recommendations, uh, since the broader markets are looking very positive, they are diverging with the market's uh, moment. Uh, you, we, we are observing a consistent decline in the Nifty and uh, Broad market guys like micro cap, mid cap, and small cap are surging up continuously without showing any uh, reasonable downward correction in between. Even though a smaller uh, immediate supports like 10 day EMAs and 20 day EMAs in mid and small caps are holding on and they are uh, continuously moving up by taking that support. On the basis of that, I am uh, uh, looking to give uh, uh, stock picks from the mid and small cap segment. My first pick is MRPL. If you look at the chart of the MRPL, MRPL has a significant upside moment recently. What it has showed is the limited downward correction after the uh, upside surge. It has moved into a, a range bound action and currently placed at the uh, resistance of around 87, 87, 50, which is a, a 10 length uh, resistance area. A sustainable move above 8750 is likely to take this uh, stock to the immediate uh, uh, target of around 92, and I'm uh, advising the placement of the stock loss around 85. So, my next uh, uh, stock uh, pick is uh, uh, KNR Construction. Chartically, KNR Construction was in a larger consolidation pattern. Recently, in the last couple of sessions, it has made an attempt to break above the 255 band, which was the high of the consolidation, and the overall chart pattern is looking positive. This upside breakout attempt is associated with the rise in the volume itself. So I'm expecting the further upside moment in this stock. Uh, one can buy this stock at current juncture, uh, and I'm expecting the upside target of around uh, uh, two, uh, 270 and uh, 245 is going to be the stop loss. My third stock pick is uh, RHIM. RHIM, RHIM Magnesita India Limited. RHIM was moving in a larger consolidation band over the last uh, 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 months, in fact, and recently it had witnessed the consolidation, yeah, downward correction in a, within a range moment. Today, a sharp up move 
as well as uh, the sharp up move of this week has taken out this resistance band currently trading around 715 the next immediate uh, resistance which is going to be the initial target would be around 750 and one can place a stop loss of around uh, 690 we'll uh, <clears throat> leave it there thanks very much for joining in uh, good speaking with you actually uh, you know i wanted to ask you about gmm fordler as well but let's get a fundamental view prakash of course is with us prakash uh, thanks again uh, for being here gmm fordler uh, you know, seeing a big move today. The big overhang, uh, which people yeah. have been talking about, is the promoter at some point, uh, you know, th th some large amount of stake will come uh, to the market, right? And uh, many have been waiting that, well, let's get that over with and then maybe the uh, stock starts to perform. It's up 11, 11.5%. Is there any news flow or what's the view, really? So, good afternoon, uh, Prashant. So, I, I'm not too aware of the news flow specifically, but what's probably uh, getting the stock excited mm -hmm is the fact that it's taken almost 18 months for, you know, the, the corporate action related to uh, the, the promoters buying some stake at uh, a rate which was not very favorable to the minority shareholders. And then the business probably has finally taken center stage. I think effectively the entire underlying industry is something, especially the pickup in pharma, is something which is very positive for some of these players and they're just two large players in the listed space. The other player hasn't done any capacity expansion, whereas they've probably been much better. They've shown improvement in revenues, even in a uh, phase where pharma and chemicals are not doing so well. So my sense is, you know, they, they'll probably have that advantage and they've uh, introduced a lot of other products which are import substitutes. So which, which is something where, you know, the margins also would probably start looking healthy. Now, what happens in terms of a block coming into the market? And I'm, I'm not too aware of that. But from a fundamental perspective, it started getting attention given these numbers that just came out. So I think it's it's more of that. And the market's actually very hungry in the mid-cap space to look for newer names. Yeah, I mean, and there is fatigue uh, with the old names. So you, you always want to kind of latch on to something which seems a bit fresh. So. Yeah. What about uh, defense? Uh, the defense earnings per se have not lived up to the hype, the kind of stock run-up that we've seen over the last couple of months. What have you made of the numbers and is it time to lighten up any positions, any particular stock that you would like to highlight? So, you know, Dimat, defense has played out brilliantly as a cycle. I mean, mm. when, when nobody was wanting to look at shipping companies, uh, at engineering companies, you had so much uh, going for them. Uh, in fact, there was one time when all uh, shipping companies put together were available for under 3,000 crores market cap, you know, the, the larger ones. Because it took some time for them to serially get listed one after the other. And then that pocket started getting a bit abuzz given the huge order book that we built in. And I think thanks to the government's efforts at not only uh, getting into this Atma Nirbhar phase, but it's more, more of, you know, Vishwa uh, getting Nirbhar on Bharat, that's, that's changed. And that has given a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, acceleration to smaller businesses as well. So you look at defenses now probably about 35, 40 companies uh, in the listed space. It's not just the PSUs. I mean, there's a whole host of uh, people who have kind of come in, uh, especially in the recent listings. If you look at earnings, I think uh, it was bound to happen. There's too much of expectation that's building up. Orders don't happen. It's a long sales cycle. You know, you, you, the moment you start pitching, it takes you 18 months to actually get close to delivering. And the only companies that have a brilliant business model in that sense are HAL, uh, you know, some of the shipping companies which are uh, executing orders, which are very clearly visible for the next six, seven years. Mm. So so that that's that's going to be coming in their favor. But the likes of BEL, which have to sing for their supper every quarter, are going to face a little bit of this yo-yos on, on, on expectations and results. So that's, that's bound to happen. But look at new players, which will start playing a very important role in defense. And Kalyani as a brand, Bharat Forge, uh, of course, they run their defense business under only one brand, and that's... Kalyani and and their business uh, model is is so product driven and not just project driven okay which is a huge difference between the naval projects that uh, some of the shipping companies uh, shipyard companies execute or the HALs or the world and there's one company that I keep on bringing I I don't know if you remember uh, when when the deal with the uh, uh, with the US majors that was announced there's a company called Midhani yeah, yeah and and People They're making are, some of the metal and the steel yes, that's going absolutely. into the aircraft. Absolutely, I mean that is. Saying, see, right? you don't, you can't yeah. make aircraft engines without the kind of expertise on metallurgy that you need. You know, yeah. it's not just normal steel plates that you put and get. They are the only ones who actually have the expertise and the wherewithal to do it. Yeah. And we discussed that stock at about, you know, 260. Uh, I don't even remember exactly, but 
I mean, they, you, you have these kind of opportunities which go unsung. Mm. Uh, you need to look at that. So there is, uh, there is some frontline mm. froth, but then there is a huge opportunity which is building up. You know, uh, 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 Prakash, I have a follow-up question on, uh, on Bharat Forge. By the way, we've got Cochin Shipyard numbers and they're not bad at all. Yeah. The MLS been bad and uh, Masgao, you know, was not exactly too robust at least this quarter. Cochin Shipyard's numbers that just came out, they've done a profit of about 100 crores versus 42 crores last year. Uh, the revenues up about 8%, margins have almost doubled from 7% to about 16%. So that's one good defense number. Uh, let's just hear out the the uh, Baba Kalyani bite because, as I said, Prashant was in conversation. And then, then I'm going to come back and ask sure. you about where that story is going because uh, of uh, the management, that is Baba Kalyani, extremely optimistic. And they're saying that they want uh, Bharat Forge to pretty much become the artillery house for the world. Take a look. On the domestic side, uh, there is a huge pipeline uh, uh, of orders uh, which are under, let's say, the whole process. The process uh, is quite complex. If you look at artillery guns, uh, there is already a uh, discussion going on for 307 guns uh, of ATACs. There is another uh, RFP for mounted guns, which is also of similar number. So we are looking at, uh, at least in these two areas, uh, uh, the opportunity in the next, let's say, one year of getting order is uh, some anywhere between three to 5,000 crores. I've yeah. always been uh, many years yeah. ago that Bharat Forge will strive to become a artillery house uh, on a global basis. We are targeting this year uh, this our financial year to, to get to somewhere around 1200 crores uh, okay. but that will be say, almost uh, like eight 900 crores of exports uh, and then the remaining domestic mm -hmm. and I think next year we would like to double this number mm, okay so those are of course uh, big expectations and you know uh, big uh, announcements they're coming in uh, and Prakash, some of the you know the naysayers will say that we've been waiting for this big moment to arrive for the Kalyani Group, right? And yeah. uh, Bharat Forge, uh, Mr. Baba Kalyani has been saying this for several years, and he explained that they're doing it all in-house. It's all indigenous. There's no tech transfer. They're not only you know manufacturing with someone else's technology, and maybe that's why it's been taking some time. The stock hasn't shot up as much as the 400% on HAL, right? Yeah. It's not been that kind of a massive monster move. But do you think that could happen or is this the slow and steady? This is for investors who want to sort of play it for the long haul and expect more uh, reasonable, you know, uh, earnings. Yeah, good question. And, and and that's precisely why brokerages are so divided on mm. what to expect out of this. You know, yeah. so, and, and some of them also went on to say it's valued so pre at such a premium. The, you know, look at look at the history of how uh, Bharat Forge as a company has evolved into a defense player. I mean, he's talking about 2400 crores next year uh, in the next 18 months. Which, which is significant on the overall in the overall scheme of things. Otherwise, they've plodded along as an auto castings uh, supplier and, and, and from automotive to railways. That took four or five years for mm. them to really get up to speed. And when they were the first to start defense collaboration with some of the Israeli companies yeah. trying to you know, get into that. The reason why the pace of growth for them or go-to-market uh, is going to be better is only uh, external factors, if you ask me. Uh, after the Ukraine war, there's a huge disruption in component supplies on the artillery side. They, you know, that pocket of the Central Asian republics, uh, all, all those ex-USSR uh, mm. nations, they are the w largest suppliers of artillery. Uh, and, and with the Sweden or you know, some of the other companies throw it. But that disruption is actually left so much of space for the likes of Bharat Forge to come in. So if they really have a good product uh, and, and, and uh, you know, they can deliver uh, effectively on that, they can actually live up to that aspiration. But it's going to be a while and it's going to be visible. So there's nothing wrong if you were to buy it. If something goes wrong, you'll get to know about it. It's not like a secret at, at what they're doing. And you'll only get to know about it after 12 months. So I think it's it, you need to give it uh, some fair this year. And as a matter of disclosure, I do have exposure to this name. Uh, right from the time, it was an automotive player. So it's not uh, just the defense thing. But I think it's it's important to realize the timing of the business is much more important at times to re-rate a stock than, than just the narrative itself. Okay, okay. <coughs> uh, Prakash, to stay on, need to slip into a very short break. When we return, we'll also invite our Alpha Manager for the day, Aman Chauhan, Fund Manager at Abacus Asset Management.
Welcome back. We're in conversation with Prakash Tiwan, who's joined us here in the studio. Uh, Prakash, the top Nifty gainer today is HCL Tech, three and a half percent higher. That yes. big Verizon deal of two point one billion dollars. Uh, what did you make of it? Are there any chinks in the armor? Is this the turnaround moment for HCL Tech? Oh, for HCL Tech, of course it is. But whether you can extrapolate that for other companies happening and and you know the biggest of big companies coming into an order. Uh, issuing mode i don't know but you know uh, uh, when i speak to some of the us fund friends who are uh, working out there the feeling i get is that the recession so called recession is actually losing steam in terms of uh, except for a few pockets like commercial real estate and you know some consumption themes but because of the destocking that everybody the fear of recession actually had a larger impact on on how things looked Uh, then the real thing now, if that were to change and a lot of money would go out of India, we will start thinking, oh, why FIs are running out? But it's actually going to be good for us uh, if the valuations get a bit softer, whereas the fundamentals don't change. So IT could probably be the first one to to signal some sort of a change in that. Uh, these quarterly numbers don't give you that confidence. So if there is something like a follow up or a stream of news flow around order booking, I, so I you would bet change. on US corporate confidence coming back. Yes. Resulting so in spend, which yes, will eventually which will go happen. well. It could be with a lag, Reema, but definitely it's there. Uh, yeah, there's there's there. a huge potential. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think uh, we'll uh, <coughs> Prakash leave it there. I will say goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you. Very Pleasure much for joining us, and uh, yeah. <coughs> you know, see you. you next time you're here. Please do drop it. We'll look forward to it. More frequent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks very much. Aman Chauhan is with us, a fund manager at Abacus uh, Asset Management. He's joining us now to take some questions. Aman, um, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, you know. <coughs> what what uh, what fresh uh, you guys are stock pickers right i mean very bottom up uh, not a very macroish kind of call top down uh, so let me begin by asking you uh, what have you done recently in the last uh, fortnight maybe a little longer uh, not much we have added uh, more to some of the existing holdings this based on the how the corporate results have come in so we would have added more to our financials uh, we would have added More towards cement, uh, we would have added more towards some of the canned goods holdings that we had. Um, pharma, we had added in the past, so not in the recent time. So the last fifteen days, these were the three sectors that we would add. Pharma would be say two months back. IT still neutral, so I haven't done anything new on the IT front as of now. Hmm. Hi, Aman. Uh, good afternoon, Aman. What about the wires and cable space? You know, you all have a big winner in there, Polycap. Uh, What's the view, though, on this space? Do you think plenty of uh, uh, room for it to go, or do you think in the near term, I think I'll have exposure only via Polycap? Do you think uh, for the near term, some kind of consolidation would be par for the course? Uh, I feel this consumer durables, consumer uh, companies, wire companies, uh, even building material companies, they are all headed for good times because one, the festive season is starting. They didn't have that good a demand uh, in the last two quarters, but closer to the Diwali season, festive season, and plus state elections in November, December, followed by central elections next year. So the next twelve months looks good because we have seen ahead of the election there is decent amount of money which comes into the economy. The rural market is buzzing. The rural demand picks up. And this can be something which is interesting uh, for these sectors and these stocks. That is the reason we are staying put. We uh, we. Own many companies in these sectors and uh, continue to own them and like them from a twelve-month perspective. Um, Aman, um, I know you don't talk about individual stocks, but I just wanted to get your thoughts in on Root Mobile because there was this very large deal, uh, you know, with uh, I think Opal Group, uh, Proximus Opal Group, the Belgium-based company. How should an investor, a shareholder, look at this deal between Root Mobile and the fact that the promoters are partially exiting the company? Yes, yeah, so as you mentioned, we don't discuss stock specific things, but what is there in the public news is something that I can definitely tell you that uh, the ownership has changed. Now the owner, the new owner, is a global company. It's a Belgian government-backed uh, entity with a decent presence in the U.S. markets. Root predominantly was in the Asia Pacific market, so it's a good, clear synergy between both the entities, and that should eventually. Benefit the merge entity. So uh, clearly, from a two to three year perspective, this is a growing market globally, uh, and uh, Root is now better positioned to uh, 
uh, you can say capitalize on that. So right now, from being a regional to uh, say Asia, Africa, and Middle East, now you are also getting access to European market as well as the US market. So then you become a global player. So uh, the ambition is to be among the top three globally, and they have all the reasons to be there for the next two to three years. So you are more bullish on Root Mobile post the deal. You can say that, yeah. Okay, okay, got that. Um, uh, Aman, hi, good afternoon. I was looking at the uh, composition of the Abacus Diversified Alpha Fund, where you have a lot of the old economy stocks, basically industrial stocks. There's NTPC, there's Larson, there's Cummins. Uh, then you also have a Hindalco. You have a couple of the large banks there as well. So on uh, the industrial side of the market. Uh, what's the thought? I mean, have you been happy with the sort of earnings that have been coming through? We were just having a discussion on defense as well, uh, for that matter. Uh, whether it's industrials or defense or engineering, uh, you know, what's the criteria and the filter that you're adopting as you're looking at perhaps uh, additions to the portfolio from here on? Because the stocks have already run up a lot. Exactly. So pretty happy with the results, not happy with the P multiple that comes along with the results. So uh, the challenge is where to deploy the fresh money, right? So these are good companies, still at decent valuation, but definitely you can't pay a very high multiple to them, even if they are growing pretty strongly in the near term. So outlook for these sectors, industrials, cap goods, and domestic manufacturing, defense, uh, for the next few years is definitely positive. Now it's up to us as to what kind of valuation we would like to pay. So we are, but as you're aware, more of value conscious investors. So we would like to strike a balance somewhere between what growth and what P we give. So we focus much on peg ratios. One, 1 1.5 peg is what we are pretty comfortable at. So if the company is growing at 30 times, I don't mind paying a 30, 40 P, but I definitely do mind paying a 70, 80 P. So keeping that criteria in mind, uh, the names that you mentioned feature into a portfolio because these companies would broadly, uh, you can say, meet the criteria that I just told you. Okay, all right. Uh, Aman, what about pharma? You know, that index has come back in a big way. Have you added positions out there? A couple of stocks that you'll have exposure to, I think, is Sun Pharma. But for your portfolio on the whole, have you increased the weightage? Uh, marginally. I not say much. In the last three months, we would have added a few bits of pharma exposure. In the last month or so, we haven't added much uh, on the pharma. Market. But whatever we have, uh, we own it with a 2 to 3 perspective. Pharma as a space is looking good. The high base of COVID is behind us. And the margin as well as pricing pressure in the US market is also abating. So as things move ahead, uh, from a good base, these companies can again start delivering consistent mid-teens to high-teens kind of uh, earnings growth. And that should eventually get reflected in the stock price also. So that's broadly what the pharma view for us is. Is that uh, kind of going a big? Are you doing it uh, for growth, Aman? I mean, this pharma into pharma or is a little bit, little bit of protection? Although pharma also on the downside has not offered that much protection, but uh, you know you're not you're not uh, a team which is satisfied by mid-teens kind of growth. You look you look for a high growth. So just wondering. So the whole portfolio can't be high growth. So this also brings in stability. We are you can say we have very few of consumer names. We have very few of high P stocks which are very stable stocks. They offer less return, but they are pretty stable. So in a way, this also gives us stability on the portfolio front. So we compensate that uh, the less of consumer exposure with more of pharma or IT exposure. So that is the balancing that we look forward. Oh, okay, that's interesting. In fact, I was just noticing that, that I think uh, in your top holdings, I could only spot maybe a Radico uh, or a Rheem and not too many consumer stocks, neither discretionary nor staple. So that, that's entirely a, a valuations issue, is it? Entirely valuation issue. Okay, got that. So talk a little more about uh, technology. I mean, you, you mentioned broad thoughts on Root. But it, for instance, HCL Tech is a big holding in a, in a couple of your portfolios as well. Uh, and there's been this raging debate about uh, what lies ahead and whether, uh, you know, we'll go back to the pre-COVID normal and whether the growth was just over-exaggerated, over-anticipated during COVID times. So where do you stand in that debate? And uh, when you talk about holding some of these large-cap tech stocks in the portfolio, what is the earnings run rate that uh, that you'd be happy with, that, that you can pencil in at current valuations? So we feel this is a year which is going to be a reset year for IT companies uh, because what happened is during COVID time, there was a mad rush to go digital. There was a mad rush to spend and be 
uh, ahead of each other on the digital front and that is now awaiting lots of uh, startups, lots of dot-com companies, IT budget have also come under the scanner because the easy money which was flowing through during COVID times through private equities for most of the startups have now stopped. So they have to be rational in their spending and that has impacted the near-term earnings growth uh, for the Indian IT company. But as a business case, these companies have proven um, during COVID times that it is not just a cost arbitrage, but they can deliver globally, seamlessly. During the whole lockdown, there was not a single day when we would have discussed that this banking system is down, my online payment has not gone through, my online shopping has not gone through, something is not working. So digitally sitting in India, whether working from home or office, in an IT company that delivered, right? So that is something which is a statement, and this is going to stay for the next multi-decades now. So this is the year where the reset, because from a high base where people were desperate to send, spend, and they were spending big time, and were okay to give you even higher bidding rates, now they're getting more rational. Once that sets in this year, then from a normal base, I think a uh, high single digit to a uh, can say low uh, team for a large cap company in IT would be should be the norm. That should be the cattle growth over the next few years. For a mid cap IT company, it's anywhere going to be say high double digits to even 20-25% growth in some companies. And that's where our focus is. So in IT also, uh, we prefer looking at the mid cap than the large cap because the growth rate definitely is going to be much higher in, in the mid cap space. Aman, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining in. Need to slip into a very short break, but with the news that the markets are once again down more than 100 points. When we started the show at 2.30, the Nifty was down about 50, 60 points, but the cut has gotten deeper and we're at the day's low once again. Nifty below 19,430. Get into a break. We'll come back and get you a check on what dealing rooms are saying in our segment, D-Street Chatter. We get you a few BTSD calls too.
Welcome back. You're with us on Closing Bell. And uh, let's move on and uh, talk about Zydus Life Sciences, which reported a good set of numbers for the first quarter. Growth was led by strong U.S. sales. Revenue saw 30% increase on a year-on-year -year basis. EBITDA expanded 81% over last year. To discuss this and more, uh, Ekta caught up with uh, Shravil Patel, the MD of the company. She started off by asking him about the U.S. business. Take a look. So I think the U.S. business has seen an overall uh, great quarter. Uh, actually, Revlimid has been also in the previous quarters also. So on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis, there has not been any major uh, significant increase on, on only Revlimid. But it's just because of the portfolio of products that we were able to launch many one-time buy opportunities with some uh, pricing in the U.S. being uh, relatively uh, stable. Uh, and better product mix, I think, has led to uh, a much better performance than... Uh, normally expected. Okay, all right. So that's the reason for the improvement that you've seen in the U.S. business. Uh, what is the quarterly run rate that we can expect for the U.S. sales going forward now, considering that you are at this level of around $295 million? Are we going to assume this is a base going forward? So I think on the U.S. business front, uh, we do uh, strongly believe that over the, uh, this coming financial year, we should have a good double-digit growth uh, to the U.S. market, uh, assuming that we will still have competition to one of our differentiated products. So in spite of that, we will see a good double-digit growth to the U.S. business. Okay, good double-digit growth. Is the Pfizer injectable plant uh, getting damaged in the U.S. maybe an opportunity for you all? Um, so I think it's too early to say. The only uh, uh, media reports say that there was most to do with the warehousing and other areas. But uh, so I think I would have no comments on to know whether there has been any impact because of supplies related to this. Okay. Now coming to India, India in fact has grown just shy of 10% this time round. Adjusted for NLEM, what was the growth and what are you guiding for in FI24? So I think the India business has done very well for us. Uh, we have adjusted to NLM and have had a growth of 12%, which is much better than the market growths. And if you take the journey over the last three to four quarters, we have consistently delivered market uh, growths uh, for our India formulations business, which is a large formulations business for us. Uh, and more importantly, I think going forward also, we are seeing good uh, trajectory to this. This is helped by our proprietary and differentiated molecules uh, that we have been able to launch in, the, in India, and they're becoming more sizable and relevant for us. And uh, going forward also, I think uh, what is very happy to note is this quarter, we had almost a 6% volume growth. So uh, it was not a price-led growth, but sheer improvement in volumes that has also led to this growth. Okay. Uh, and what about margins? Because the U.S. has done well. Your margins have come in at these elevated levels of around 29%. Uh, tell us, what is a range which is sustainable for you when it comes to your operating margins? So, yes, we have had a, a significant improvement in margins. And going forward, also, we believe that from our earlier guidelines, guidance, we would see at 150 to 200 basis points improvement in our margins in the coming financial year. Okay, so what is a sustainable level that we can expect? So 24 or 24 plus is something that is sustainable. Okay. Uh, your NCE subsidiary, last quarter the company had made an impairment of around 600 odd crores in Sentinel Therapeutics. What was the performance like this quarter? So the, the, now the Sentinel is working mostly on ultra-rare orphan disease. It has launched a one product which is newly pre and we hope that in the coming year we have two more important launches that come up in the rare diseases side. Uh, so the, the scale up is still uh, very early on. I think we need another next two to three years for this business to scale up uh, from its earlier levels uh, after we stopped selling one of the drugs uh, in the last year after genericization. Well, the markets actually have moved to the low point of the day. So now we're trading around that 19,425 and the Nifty Bank actually is the one that's breaking down. So that's more below the 44,200-odd marker. As of now, it appears it's not going to be a good close. And if we have to bounce from here, it'll be important because otherwise we're going to be ending closer to the low point of the day. But a good time to get a quick check into D Street Chatter. Nimesh joins us. Nimesh, what are you picking up in terms of uh, the Lal Street action? Well, you know, Nigel, not only for today, but for this week, the markets have been in a, in a very narrow range, right? We've been trading between 
19400 and 19600 largely in that range so the sense is uh, you know either we have to break uh, below 19200 for a big fall down or above 19800 for a big rally to ups, to to carry on so that's the that's a broader technical range so to speak in terms of flows again a mixed job trade but i i, I guess uh, while the screen may not suggest but there is buying interest in the uh, in the technology names the large cap technology stocks a well bit again in today's state so this week the trend has been selling banks and buying it that's been the broad from a flow from a flow point of view uh, i guess the other sector which has done well is the psus not only the psu banks which are actually outperforming the large private banks today but largely the psu stocks are well bid and there is a lot of action as well from the hnis as well in the psu stocks so that's that's again a sector which has really, really outperformed and the broader market even in this range bound tra- trade for the whole week the broader markets have relatively really outperformed there are a lot of stocks which have done well largely in back of good numbers or 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 chased by uh, by momentum from hri so the broader market momentum continues but it's like in the in the in the nifty and the and the bank nifty seems to be in a in a very tight range you need to break on the either side for a big decisive move well that's right uh, nimesh uh, you know what about the psus you know you had our prime minister narendra modi he said it you know yeah, there is value it. out there and the market heard you know like, the yeah. nation has heard it so absolutely but what about individual stocks so you pick up so nigel you know uh, the the big theme has been the, the large block deal so i'll continue with that theme as well even in today's there were multiple blocks the first was uh, suven pharma there was a 2% equity which got changed hands in suven pharma today and i believe a leading uh, fi investor who is an existing holder in the stock was a was a buyer in today's block so disclosures could be important in suven pharma today the second stock is sgs enterprises very small stock not much been talked about been consolidating in a very narrow range i believe even in sgs enterprises there is an indication of a very large block deal coming very soon so that's something to track there the third stock is pnb uh, i spoke about uh, you know psu banks outperforming the private banks pnb stands out large and back of very strong buy flows at a leading effect so looks like some bit of buying traction is back uh, is back across psu stocks and pnb leads the chart there and the last stock is adn cash this is a again there was a large block today nearly 5% equity has changed hands in terms of uh, sellers looks like a private equity investor was a seller and there were multiple buyers including a hedge fund so this week if you look at uh, this is a second com- cash management company where there was a large uh, p sold so again you know uh, that the trend of p selling and promoter selling continues actually not just p and promoters the trend of selling is continuing in the market today itself nimesh thanks so much for that uh, take a look at the screen because we're looking quite weak now 19416 on the index a sharp second you know leg of the sell down that's happened now and uh, we are making fresh lows not for the day but for the week and that's the point we've been making that that is why uh, you know this is not looking like a very good session at all uh, the market is now at the lowest levels uh, since the 3rd of october we have done all the work of the last uh, about 8 7 uh, or 8 trading sessions and the weakness on the bank nifty is uh, quite severe now almost 400 points down 44150 so yep it is bears in control as we head into the weekend that is the screen for you nagraj is uh, back with us nagraj uh, tell us what do you make of this fresh bout of selling and what would the advice be now going into the weekend yes in the uh, selling seems to have in- intensified uh, but i believe there is a support for the market if you talk about the nifty uh, 19300 uh, is a immediate support and uh, i'm expecting uh, if this uh, support fails to hold uh, nifty to bounce back from the lower levels of uh, around uh, 19100 to 19000 level so correction is uh, correction was due uh, according to a uh, last 3 uh, 4 months rally this is what exactly happening in bank nifty as well uh, after the rbi uh, uh, announcement the bank nifty has a uh, bit uh, weaken uh, and i'm expecting further uh, downside bank nifty but uh, not uh, a sharp downside reversal as of now from here uh, bank nifty is uh, likely to find the next support of around 43800 to 43900 levels Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Let's uh, take stock of some earnings which we are anticipating. Nigel, JSPL, what's the street looking at? Well, the street is anticipating a good set of numbers. Actually, just take a look at the stock. It's outperforming all through the trading session. There's big open interest build up as well. Let's run you through the expectations. On the top line, we're expecting a downtick of close to around 2%. On a year-on-year basis, it'll be down by close to around 35% on the EBITDA front, which would mean margins will compress and the profitability will be much lower. But for JSPL, the key factors at play is that the volume growth will be in excess of around 10%. What weighs on the top line, the reason we'll see a flattish to a degrowth out there is because realizations are sharply lower on a year-on-year basis. The positive, though, is the quarter one uh, FI24 EBITDA number. That's likely to be a little bit higher or flattish in comparison to quarter four FI23, which will be much better than any of its peers. Why is that? They'll get the benefit of lower coal prices. Second factor is their I know cost as well will be lower. 
And the third factor is in quarter four FY23, you had a one-off out there, which will not be there uh, this time around. So that's why on a quarter to quarter, so it will look actually the best among the steel names. What do we watch out for? Management guidance on volumes, the export volumes in particular. The CAPEX as well as their debt plans. Remember, they're looking at ramping up capacity from around 9 million tons to around 15 million tons. So how is that progressing is going to be very, very important. But for the time being, the street is sensing that we're likely to see a bit of a positive surprise going by the stock price movement. Okay, thank you very much for that. And Surbhi is also waiting by to tell us what she's expecting from Sun TV this time. Surbhi? Thanks so much for that. So, you know, uh, for Q1, the revenues are expected to be up nearly 6% on a year-on-year -year basis. And this is largely going to be driven by the IPL revenue. The IPL revenues are expected to be in the range of 450 crores, which was nearly 200 to 240 crores same time last year. But on the other hand, ad revenues are expected to be muted, which we have seen in Z as well, because uh, the, ad, um, the FMCG space is muted for the first half, which is why it is going to have an impact on the ad revenue. And uh, on the subscription revenues, the expectations are that the revenue growth will be in um, uh, close to 10% on a year-on-year -year basis. Margins are expected to be stable at around 63%. PAT is going to be uh, in the 600 crore range versus the 494 crores that we've seen same time last year. And again, this is largely going to be led by the IPL uh, revenue. It will be also important to watch where the position is on the when it comes to market share and the IPL revenue. So two key things that I'll be watching for Sun TV. Thank you very much uh, for that. And here is a quick programming note. Our weekend special editor's roundtable is coming up today at 4.30 p.m. We get you a sneak preview of what are the big themes that we're tackling. As another week uh, of close to $1 billion of block deals in which promoters and strategic investors have sold large stakes. Nimesh will get us the details. Recent IPOs on D Street were off colour in the first quarter of 24. Nigel will get us the details on this. This week, we saw signs of a turnaround and improvement in platform companies, the new age tech companies. What went right for these companies? Sonia will get us a quick analysis. Outright deflation in China was confirmed this week. Can China avoid the Japanification of itself? Prashant takes a look, so don't forget to tune in. We go live at 4.30 p.m. Editor's Roundtable right here on CNBC TV 18.
Welcome back. Well, as we speak, the markets, at least we've defended the lower levels and intraday we've recovered 25 points or thereabouts from the day's low. So let's see how this goes. Nine minutes to the close. Mayuresh Joshi joins us to help us out with some stock analysis. Uh, hi, Mayuresh. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Uh, Mayuresh, what are you making of the move that we're seeing in Hindustan Copper? Have you heard anything? I mean, there's no brokerage that really covers it. Valuations is not an argument because they do a couple of rupees of EPS every quarter. But the stock has been moving from strength to strength. Your view? Afternoon, Nigel. I think two things that have transpired. Uh, after Hindalco posted its numbers, uh, the copper business for Hindalco has stood out very, very well. So if you probably look at both the rod sales uh, and the core copper earnings in terms of value-added products, uh, they have actually shown huge signs of stability and, in fact, some signs of improvement going forward as well, uh, going by what the management probably believes. Uh, that's a very small component of overall Indalco's business. Uh, but for Hind Copper, I think that's a majority part of their business. Uh, and if the expectations largely are that the copper part of the business uh, for Hindalco has done exceptionally well, I think Hindustan Copper, where a majority of earnings comes from copper, copper value add products as well, uh, uh, including rods, I think that should hold up earnings. Uh, and with inventory levels uh, expected to be at uh, dismal levels, uh, both domestically and at an international scale, uh, any bounce back which probably comes to in the second half can have an incremental addition. So I think that's what probably we are sensing in terms of what this kind of can probably do. Mm. Okay, got that. Mayoresh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, I wonder if uh, Z is under your coverage and if it is, then uh, well, finally, we have a breakthrough in, uh, in the form of the NCLT clearance on the merger. Uh, what thoughts on the stock from here on? Sorry, unfortunately, Surbhi, afternoon to you, not, not on our coverage list. But I think the news that has probably happened is obviously going to be value accretive because uh, in spite of uh, the promoter uh, uh, transfer or, or, or what happens to the promoter still being in limbo, I think a large part of the consensus uh, on the street is that uh, since the NCLT approval has come through, a lot of synergies will now start getting built into both in terms of revenues and cost. Uh, uh, so I think that, that's what the street sense is, no official coverage. Okay. Uh, do you look at Apollo Tires? The stock has slipped some more, now down nearly 9%. It's rallied 70% plus in the last one year. And the you know operational performance in Europe was a bit underwhelming. But um, would you like Apollo Tires or the, are there any other tire stocks under your radar? Absolutely, ma'am. I think tire stocks did exceptionally well. Uh, Apollo, JK Tires uh, uh, ran up quite significantly in the past few weeks. Uh, and obviously, I think the tailwinds in terms of the new launches uh, that were expected to take place, uh, the kind of bookings that you've probably seen, Hero, Bajaj, and their new launches, uh, the uh, the replacement market obviously doing very, very well for these players as well. Uh, I think that had aided a lot of growth in terms of price. Uh, the numbers, I think, and expectations from the market, I think it was a clear amount of mismatch, as you rightly pointed out. I think a below par performance as far as Europe is concerned. But to a large extent, uh, I think two things that the street will probably look out for, specifically from tire earnings. One, obviously, in terms of uh, the OEM players, where demand is expected to remain strong. The... Okay, I think we lost a line there with Mayuresh. Uh, we'll just try and have uh, that. Okay, I think he's back. Mayuresh, go on. Sorry, we lost the line there. So I think uh, the, the aspect in terms of how demand holds up, both in terms of the replacement and the OEM market, which it should, uh, and how raw material prices are expected to move. You've probably seen crude move up a tad bit in the last few weeks. Uh, so crude derivatives uh, obviously are going to move northwards to a certain extent. Uh, and therefore, does that have a significant amount of uh, demand contraction is something to be seen. Uh, uh, the dumping that was probably happening in the replacement market to a large uh, degree has been constrained. Uh, but numbers were a little bit uh, off the radar in terms of uh, mismatch that they probably reported. But uh, if they fall more and right, if they make a proper pace uh, at lower levels, uh, Apollo JK Tire would definitely be on our watch. Okay, uh, Mayuresh, and finally, as we are all set to wind down for the day and the week, uh, leave us with the, you know any interesting stock that perhaps was uh, you know uh, top of mind for you in this result season, whether great earnings or some important triggers. Uh, leave us with the, a good pick that you have in mind. Uh, so we, uh, so we actually we like uh, Kirloskar oil engines a lot. I think that's that's something we're continuing holding in our uh, portfolios. Uh, the stock delivered a very good set of numbers uh, yesterday. Uh, obviously, a leadership position in the power generation generator space. Uh, 
and it suffices for most uh, power outputs right from 2 MBA to almost 1200 MBA as well. Uh, the export markets and domestic markets have held very well for Kirloskar oil engines this time round. Uh, in fact, the management has put out a statement, the CPCD emission norms, uh, they are fully compliant across their product range and the only Indian company which is probably compliant, which means the volume growth should be even good, should be good even going into the second half um, as we approach. Uh, EBITDA margin standalone consolidates both year on year or quarter and quarter was a clear beat. Uh, and with the kind of numbers that one can expect in terms of top line and earnings growth with a very good EPS and RS rating and market smith, we believe that there is much more potential for KO, KOEM. So I think Kirloskar oil engine is something that has stood out uh, for us uh, and which stands in our portfolios as this game. Uh, Mayuresh, uh, thank you very much for joining in. Enjoy the rest of the day and the weekend. It's going to be a disappointing close for the markets. We're down half a percent on the Nifty and the Sensex. But, you know, this is the week where in the beginning we were trying to see whether we can climb above our 20-day moving average, right? The hope was that markets will break the 20-day moving average an inch higher. But now we've put in a gap of nearly 200 points from that 20-day moving average. And there was a second leg of selling which came in the last 30 minutes. So the Nifty is down more than 100 points for the day, a cut of half a percent. For the week, the Nifty is down close to about a half a percent, a similar cut on the Sensex, but the mid-caps managed to close the week, at least with some gains. So week to date, the mid-cap index is currently up close to about half a percent. The advanced decline ratio for the day firmly in favour of uh, the stocks under pressure. Uh, the big losers, Innocent Bank is your top uh, Nifty drag today. You've got cuts coming through in NTPC, DV's Laboratory, UPL, SBI Life, Asian Paint, Sun Pharma. Um, so across the board, you are seeing stocks in various sectors. The gainers list includes HCL Tech, and that's the top Nifty gainer. And outside of that, just Power Grid and Titan. These are the only two stocks with gains of more than 1% in the frontline bank. Well, mid-caps, uh, the index actually succumbed to pressure. By the end of it, even the mid-cap index was down about half a percent. The advanced decline ratio is actually very negative, just about 1,000 stocks advancing and over uh, 1700 almost 1800 declining so weekday for the mid caps uh, can't take away from that if i talk about the areas where the pressure was most felt or some of the big declining stocks look at it, something like an ashoka buildcon uh, down quite a bit we were discussing z right now three four percent down on uh, z as well uh, then you had some uh, result reactions which the street didn't quite like apollo tires stands out as a sore point there 8% down on that stock. Uh, pull up some of the other uh, result reactions. InfoEdge, Nokri's numbers didn't really help matters. Uh, Mazgao Dog down about 3%. There is BEML, which came out with a loss. So, you know, some of the earnings today has, have not really inspired too much confidence. However, on the upside, uh, you do have some interesting names. And uh, GMM Fordler was definitely one of them. That's a very solid result reaction with a 10% gain. Some of the stocks that get added to the MSCI indices like uh, REC, uh, managed to retain some gains, about 3 3.5% there. Supreme Industries, again, uh, because of the index inclusion, was about up about 5%. But uh, overall, you'd have to say, going into the weekend, on a bit of a somber note, Prashant. Yeah, banks, basically, is the problem. Week on week, the bank nifty is down 1.5%. The nifty is down uh, much lesser. And mid-cap and small-cap indices are up for the week. I mean, Friday and Friday, those indices actually are uh, higher. So that's uh, the uh, issue. I mean, actually, uh, even today, it's ICIC and HD, ICIC Bank and HDFC Bank within... Between the both of them, that's 17-18% uh, to wait, uh, and they added uh, close to about 45 index points, downward pressure out of the 120 that you had on the Nifty on the lower side. And of course, I mean, disproportionate impact on Nifty Bank uh, as well. So, I mean, we leave uh, on a slightly underwhelming kind of note, but uh, we'll see how things go. U.S. market action also has been starting to look a little shaky. We'll see how that goes later today. It's a wrap on this edition of Closing Bell from all of us here. Thanks very much for staying with us. Don't go anywhere. Our Friday special, Spot Money, comes up next. Stay with us.